Hi folks, uh, welcome to Wednesday's edition of the iWrite Radio podcast videocast. PMQs today, the press conference, and we'll see what else pops up. I've got Jimmy Hutton with me. I'm Norris Stewart. We kind of half expect Stuart to join us at some point, but uh, he's not come in yet. So, Jimmy, you got bored with a presser, you were saying. I, I, I kind of did, mate. I, um, I think this week the uh, the pressers maybe relax. Uh, what was I going to say there? Are they maybe reacting to the Tory pressure that, that should be cut off? I think they're trying to get out maybe too much technical information and padding it out a wee bit. But um, again, we've, we've got plenty of information, a couple of new nuggets actually. They've published uh, something on the, I'm assuming that they've published it physically as well as on the website, but they were telling us that the new. Um, scheme that's going to be in place to track a small oh, outbreak clusters of aye. COVID and that. Um, I thought that, they didn't make a big thing of it, but that was a peril for me, the fact that we now have in place a pretty, which we've talked about before, a pretty rigorous system that's going to show us straight away the moment calls start to increase, they'll be on it. Um, aye. It's just, it was a nice thing here given the um, panic stations people seem to be in after Larry, whatever his name is down south, talked about 120,000 possible deaths in the autumn winter and that. It seems that everything that we hoped would be set up is now in place and will remain in place for some considerable time. Um, I don't know, mate. I think um, there's an awful lot of... In the press and on Twitter, there's an awful lot of white noise they know about voting systems and lists and all this nonsense so it's it's hard to get to the nuggets and it's it's nice to spot one when it pops up like that i, I i'm finding them they i mean jackson carlo's accusation of the being party political broadcast crass is so far from what's happening mm -hmm. absolutely because, yeah because it is all about giving information on i mean I didn't do it today, but I think I may well tomorrow, is count the different subjects that are being covered. Mm -hmm. um, that's Stuart about to join us. Well, today we've got an awful lot of technical information about, because it's the day that things open up, she reiterated again everything that was opening up um, and how to go about taking advantage of the fact that it's opened up. You know, again, we've got a lot on the facts campaign and how to make sure that you're socially distancing even though even though it appears they're relaxing lockdown she's very much at pains to say that she doesn't want people to treat it as relaxing you know that you still have to be very very careful about how you behave in outside spaces in indoor yeah. spaces i'll wait uh, is it, i'll wait, wait till Stuart, Stuart gets his earphones in and just warn him that we're live Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he's plugging himself in and doing various bits. Oh dear! <laughs> but uh, I, I Stuart, just to let you know from the outset, we're already live. Did you catch that? Unmute yourself, Stuart. Yep, no bother. We're already live, as I say. Welcome, Stuart Lockhead. Um, well, I'm there then. We're just really talking about the presser and how it's about as far as you could get from a party political broadcast as is possible. She's simply disseminating information to the press day in, day out, and it's getting a little boring. Yeah, I, I must admit I had to dig deep to find things to write about. That's true. Uh, on the other hand, Sorry, but she did announce uh, that, you know, there was good news. Seven days without any deaths on the, on the official reports. Uh, and um, at its peak, there were 200 people going into hospital, and now we're down to five. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the first time I can remember finishing. Uh, I remember finishing with a sort of good news paragraph. 
Um, although she did spend most of the time saying to everybody, obey the rules or we'll be back where we started. Yeah. She made it very clear that, um, that, that she'll bring back lockdown if she has to. No question of it. Well, I think she, she's kind of got to, given what's happened elsewhere in the world, all around the world. You know, it's not just been in countries that have done well, it's countries that have done terribly badly. But the minute you relax anything, there is a spike of some sort. I mean, we had that ourselves last week with that wee cluster down Aye. in Dumfries and Gallery. So. Just when, while it came to my head, Nori, when you're saying it's as far removed from a party political thing as possible, Jackson Carlos got some cheek to accuse her of that, given his wee bit on the news yesterday when he's standing pouring a pint in a pub and then telling, telling the country how well we have done how well we've done to get it to the point where we can open up pubs and that. He spent the last three months moaning about every single action the Scottish government's taken, and then he's trying to garner some credit when the things are looking a little bit better. I think, I think maybe there's been a realisation in Scottish Tory HQ that his um, party political sniping isn't working. I really don't think he realised how much support there was for Sturgeon, I would say, mostly, but the Scottish government and the way that they've handled it. Well, do you think that was, I mean, what you just mentioned there, Jimmy, was that before the second outrageous poll showing that um, UK, no, sorry, English voters are ready to dump Scotland? Aye, aye. I'm loving these polls, mate. 51% want England to be independent. When can yes. I come and do the work on the campaign for you? Yes. Yes. Well, of course, we, we know why that's happened, because they've spent so many years telling the English voting public, the dumb ones, the ones that aren't all that uh, well-educated, the ones that only read the, the Sun and the stupid papers, that uh, bureaucracy and money that was all going to all going to Europe, and the, this is why you had to dump Europe, and now they've got the second... We've got the second division version, which is, oh, look, uh, people are starting to think, oh, wait a minute, what about Scotland? Apparently, we've been stuffing money there for the last 40, 100 years, whatever. You, so it, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, what is it? Something's come home to roost. Mm -hmm. do, you know, do you know that thing where great events can quite often come out of areas you never, you never thought about? Never right. occurred to me that the English might throw us out. <laughs> Well, that's, that's why I've got um, the word serendipity in front and central of my life for the last 30 or 40 years. You never know. You just keep your eyes open and suddenly there it is. You know, but there's a hundred pound line on the pavement and you were skin or something. That's do a you, bit of exaggeration. Do you think we need to get the Brexit mob working on this? Uh, to give England sovereignty from Ireland, Scotland and Wales? No, no but it's going to be a wonderful watch. It's going to be a remarkable watch when they have to turn around to these people who want English independence and explain to them that they can't do it, that they've got to be loyal to the to, to Great Britain again, because I'm going to love to watch them dancing in the heat of a pin, for example, and telling them that, oh, wait a minute, we can't do it because we kind of need the money that comes out of Scotland. And they'll never go that far. Do you think they'll ever go that far in public? No, but I think they'll have to make some of these arguments, Stuart, when they try and put up things like um, barriers in front of Scotland voting for independence, such as a 65 or 70 percent yes vote or some nonsense like that. At that point, some of their arguments will have to come out. And I'm pretty sure that, well, if we can force that over the next year or so, I'm pretty sure that this particular Tory coterie in Westminster won't be able to make those arguments. They might, somebody might be able to write them down and put them in front of them, but that lot doing there ain't good enough to make those arguments. They'll get well, torn to shreds. I think, I think the only way they're going to get out of this, if it, if it builds any momentum, the only way to get out of it is to say, no, Scotland's a contributor. Well, also, don't forget tomorrow, the, the first ever debate in the Welsh Parliament about independence takes place. Hmm. They've never had one. They've never discussed it before. It'll be interesting yeah. to watch a wee bit of that and see some of the arguments that come out. Um, there are there are a few interesting characters in that Welsh Senate, so it'll be interesting to have a wee butcher's hook into that. 
Uh, I, the other thing that popped into my head was they've just spent, what, four years training the majority of people in England to despise Europe. And all that anger and hate has to go somewhere. Aye, exactly. Well, it's, it's, it's there, 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 yeah, well, it could be, uh, could be more than just uh, words on social media. That's the worry, of course. Well, mm. uh, yeah, I mean, the, there will be a risk in that. I mean, I'll, I'll be perfectly frank with you. Right now, I'm, I mean, I've been, I lived in the south of England for 20 years, 50 years ago. And I love it down there, and I've got friends and relatives, dozens of them. And yet, for the first time in 50 years, I'm worried about going down there and having, you know, and speaking in my Scottish accent everywhere I go. I think you'd be all right. They all think we're ratchets. Just take a hatchet with you. <laughs> Thank you very just, much. Just Did take, you just take a big, Aye? big purple tin of tenant super lager, mate. Nobody English comes near you if you've got a can of tenant super in your hand. Yeah, well, I've, there's only one person I know down there that uh, regarded me as one as that kind of Scotsman. Um, I did swear a lot all the time I lived down there. I don't know why. I think it was deliberate. But there was one person that uh, he nearly became the father-in-law of my daughter. But he was the only uh, friend, partial relative in the circle of friends I had, 30 or 40, whoever they are. Uh, that actually was racist against the Scots back then. But I'm sure there's a, there's a lot more now. There's plenty of them willing to say the odd thing, mate. But the, the reality is, there's no. It's the the disdain for Scotland is about the same as we have for the English. It's it's a construct more than anything else. You know what I mean? I want anybody to beat them at football, but I don't give a monkey's crap if you're English, Welsh, Irish, or Scots. Most folk are the same. Well, it's well, certainly Edinburgh these days. You know, there's a lot of people, English people live in Edinburgh, and generally speaking, as I've said many times before. You kind of forget they're English until they dis disappear off to a pub to watch Arsenal play football, and you think, oh, it's because they're English. <laughs> I never thought about that. Uh, <laughs> Do you think they disappeared to the pubs now that the pubs are back open again? Do you think they all disappeared at lunchtime to watch Boris? Well, I've watched well, that. Did you guys, have you, have you discussed it yet? Uh, no, 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 not yet. No, we were, we were leaving that to you. Um, I've got a very good report on that. Well, I, the first thing I would like to know is, Prime Minister's question time has now become Keir Starmer's question time because Boris is asking all the questions. Well, okay. I must agree with you that, uh, again, Keir Starmer, I mean, he's, when you think about what he's up against, he is failing week after week. Look, he asked, he's got six questions. Question five, he asked the penetrating question. What was it he said? Uh, it's about some report. What the report's about is irrelevant. He said, has the Prime Minister read the report? That was, that was not one of his... I, that was the only question that wasn't on script. And, uh, and the Prime Minister, he just said he was aware of the report. Now, uh, Keir Starmer, it was his last question, and he was quite clearly briefed. And he was going to, whatever, he was going, it was a serious question about the bereaved families for justice that have died with coronavirus. It was a, but he completely missed the obvious thing to challenge the Prime Minister. You didn't answer the question I asked you. He doesn't need to. Boris gave him the answer. I'm aware of the report. So everybody knows that means he's not read it. And a report like that automatically should have been read by the Prime Minister. So he showed himself up for the fool. But look, you, you sometimes didn't need to write the exclamation mark at the end of the sentence. Mike, oh, well, Mike, not everybody knows about that, but yeah, sorry. My contribution to this is really simple. But you agreed with me yesterday, Stuart, so you have to agree with everything else I ask you. Look, I can't, I've, you've got to let me just give, give my full report, which is only going to take about 30 seconds, okay? Oh, well, my full, but wait a minute, is this news night? 30 <laughs> seconds. It said the huge. It starts off the prime minister, huge, absolutely clear, magic wand, massive program, build jobs, build, record investment, unprecedented, fantastic, vast majority, better than any in the world. Oh wait, he's got one more, unprecedented again, massively, one day, one day, and of course he came up with Calvin Klein. Yes, yeah, explains that was nothing of what happened at bloody prime ministers' questions. But you missed. Them up. You missed, them today. 
Keir yeah. Starmer yeah. made him look like an ass and to the point where Boris is genuinely effectively saying to him, could you please oppose me in a way that I can deal with because I can't deal with the way that you're opposing me at the moment. That's what Boris was asking him. Can you please be a bit easier in your opposition because I can't cope with what you're doing at the moment? Well, that, that's what he was obviously rehearsed to do. Um, just a good that every every time he answered the six six questions, six answers, and every single time it was about, well, are you going to be on my side, or are you going to, well, are you going to be in my gang, or are you going to have a go? What a ludicrous, what a ludicrous position for a prime minister to be in, begging a leader of the opposition not that, to be too difficult with him. That's the third time at PMQs that Boris Johnson's answers have all been either hugely exaggerated congratulations to himself or why aren't you supporting the government, Mr. Opposition Leader? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the unfortunate thing was after that, Ian Blackford came on and made an absolute pig's lug of what is a serious point. But again, no, no, I don't agree with that. that. He, he got slapped down, mate. He, I mean, he was looking like a bear that had their, had their chips taken off them in the school playground. He oh, did, no, he did I don't the agree job. With that at all. He did the job he stood up to do, Jimmy. No, I think he was so much better. I mean, we, we, we talked about this before, all those long-distance questions from Sky that didn't work for him. But standing up there in, in, West, in the House of Commons, you know, he really did. He, he laid it out. He laid out what, what, what he had to do. He got his ass slapped. Well, depends how you, it depends how you put it. But he got in. He got the point. All he, he was always going to get lies and... and, and prevarication but he got in the questions the biggest power grab the un unelected body to oversee holyrood the hostile yeah. agenda uh, I mean, against that, devolution that, repeat that, and uh, the, the referendum in 1997 and even called the prime minister a bumbling shambles and a bureaucrats imposed by westminster uh, wonderful the only place that that will be shown or reported is the scottish news and the only pink thing they'll show you is Boris taking his second question and ramming it that far down his throat that it almost came at his ass. Uh, Jimmy, it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, the, the, the standard answer from Boris every week to uh, Ian Blackford has been blah, 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 SNP want to give everything to Europe, blah, 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 SNP aren't doing as well as we're doing. It doesn't matter what the question is. That's what the answer is going to be. Look, you, you know what questions are like in the House of Commons? Half of the questions are just a, a, a wee speech by the backbench MP. Right. And sometimes that's all you're ever, sometimes that's the only point of standing on your feet. And that's all that Ian Blackford did today because he knew he was, wasn't going to get a reasonable answer. Well, it totally is with Boris Johnson. There's no point asking Boris Johnson a question that needs answered. Exactly. Because he doesn't have answers. Well, there's one other thing I've got to point out about the Prime Minister's question today. His arse felt by the, the Speaker. When he, uh, in his last question, he, 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 he was talking directly at Keir Starmer, and the Speaker said, no, no, you speak through me. Give him a row. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he was grandstanding. But <laughs> I, think, I think you'll find, if you look back the catalogue, lads, that I said about four weeks ago, the Speaker has to slap him down. Well, he did. Because he's totally ignoring any questions asked of him. Mm -hmm. It's getting to the point where that's clearly the ploy. But it's yeah. getting to the point where um, particularly Starmer needs to say next week, I, I believe next week's the last one before about two months off that they're having for their summer recess. So I would go with, if I was Starmer, I would have six separate questions, no questions grouped together. And I would have every single one of them needing a technical answer that Boris can't offer, so you make him look like an absolute ass. Well, I, would, I, 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 I wouldn't agree with that because uh, we've just, as Norris just said, he's not going to give us a, an answer anyway. It, 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 to some extent, Keir Starmer is so, better off thinking, right, he's got six questions. Three of those questions, I'll just make a statement. Are no, we, Stuart, you have, you, you're, you're, you're basically saying he's not going to give you an answer, so we're going to allow him which is clearly his ploy to bypass answering questions to the leader of the opposition. Let's not ask him questions because we know we're going to get... No, no, get no look, that's what I'm saying. So you, you might as well just stand up and make biting little statements. 
I think Jimmy, I think Jimmy's right here. I, I would like to see him ask six technical questions, the answers to which everybody knows, because Boris still wouldn't answer them. Well, that right. is, that's, the, that's, well, maybe you're right there in that, in that case, now that you've qualified it a bit, Nori. Yes, they've got to be the right questions. There's no point just, I don't think the technical questions are any point. No, no. They've got to be well, ones that the public, could, the public would, would understand if he doesn't answer them. He would, he would start with a question like, what colour are red London buses? <laughs> so Boris could go, we've got the most marvellous buses in London. My <laughs> God, they've got two decks on them. Right. I, I make models out of them, <laughs> out of cardboard boxes that resemble them. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, but that, that's, that, he needs, I think he needs to do it that way so that Boris's ploy at the moment, which is simply not to answer the questions and talk a load of crap, is shown up for being the ploy it is. I'd embarrass him by some of the statements that he's made. Well, look, come on, you guys. You're you're talking as though it's a new a new ploy from a prime minister. It's not. Oh, I'm sorry. Boris has taken it to a new level. I mean, well, he, prime he, minister's he, questions is not an opportunity for prime ministers to ask questions. Look, you've got to bear in mind this is a man that's made an an entire career, a successful career, because he's now prime minister, out of line. He successfully got away with it. He's not going to change now, is he? But he's not even doing that. All he's doing is getting up and saying to Keir Starmer is, why won't you support me? Yeah, but uh, let, let me, you know? I'm, point, I'm pointing out that he's, it, it's, it's a ploy that's been, it's been successful up to now. It's managed to get him where he is, Prime Minister. Why should he change? Oh, um, he needs to be caught out. He needs to be shown up. Starmer has to find a way to force him to either stumble over the way he's treating Prime Minister's questions at the moment. And I still think it's the fault of the chair. The chair should be turning around to Boris Johnson saying, you are not here to ask questions, you are here to answer questions. Yeah, Lindsay Hoyle's too much of a... He's too much of a traditionalist, mate. He's been, he's been granted his position as Speaker, but the only reason he's been granted that position is because he's agreed to whatever Jacob rees Mogg has told him he's going to have to agree to. Well, something needs to be done about it or Boris is going to get away with murder for four and a half years. To be honest, <laughs> hopefully we won't have to worry about it after now. So, yeah. so anything else come up? Ooh. Well, well, we've already covered that, I think, briefly. Of course, there's been another poll which, uh, which now shows that, as we've covered it already, that the English electorate, more particularly even more particularly English Tory voters want English independence, which kind of leaves Scottish Tory members and particular Tory politicians sitting there in a right big pile of dung. No, 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 no. Let me be... They disregard every other poll. Let me be Jackson Carlo for a moment. Oh, if you want. It's not... going to throw darts at you. It's not independence from Scotland that they want. It's independence from the SNP Scottish government. They don't know the difference. See? See how clever that was? Uh, and I have to tell you, I fully expect Jackson Carlow to come out with that line. Oh, yeah, he's watching. Uh, because he might be. You never know who's watching. It's the, only, it's the only way he can dress that up as not being absolutely, completely and utterly disastrous. What I'd like to know, Nori, is how come the, 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 our, our watchers are not fans, but the people that comment about this programme, you never get a mention. But Jimmy's are obviously number one favourite. Uh, I'm sorry, I got slagged off for, for being some sort of quizzling. Because Jimmy's... Oh, quizzling? Uh, Quizmaster. Uh, because I thought there was maybe the need for practical answers yesterday. Mm. Oh, you're, okay. you're back on me. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, it's just, it's just nice to be actually. listened to. Oh, Jimmy, you're, you've definitely got a serious, solid fan base out there. Mate. Uh, didn't need to, you didn't need to tell me pish like that. So. Well, the, worrying thing, the worrying thing is that every second question is worrying, shall we say. You wouldn't want to repeat it in public. <laughs> uh, he's read the Ginger Dugs column today. Oh, well, he usually comes up with something really good. 
Yeah, it was quite a good one today, mate. It was talking about list parties and oh wow, yes, strange, um, interesting how, how can splitting votes and all that kind of nonsense. But what it struck me most about it was that he seems to be the person least in the echo chamber. He's, um, you know, uh, you look at like Scottish Twitter, Scottish Yes Twitter in particular, and some of them get so deep into their own asses with it. And, you know, there's folk out there who actually believe that absolutely everything they write or say is 100% correct. But as the Dugs won the day, I thought, it, it, there's, there's one floating about as well for James Kelly. It, it just, it puts out some facts and lets you make up your own mind without trying to jam any of those facts down your throat. And it was quite interesting to get a look at that after what's been appearing over the last week or two. Right, well, I've got a question for you two. Are you worried about the future prospects of an independence referendum? Or, well, let's just limit it to next year's Hollywood election. Are you worried about the outcome of that election because of these list parties appearing now? I'd say not really, mate, because I genuinely think there's, other than the bubble, I don't think they've got much traction at the moment. And that, that the boy who, you know, the alliance thing that launched yesterday, there might have been a bit of credibility to him, given that he's an ex-MSP and he's been in the party for 50 odd years and that. But he's basically came out in the day and, today and said, Tommy Sheridan is welcome under the umbrella of the alliance for a yes. So basically a convicted perjurer who has tried twice to have that conviction set aside at the Court of Appeal and failed twice is welcome in a new political party. So any trust that anybody can have with that boy has gone straight out the window with that one, surely. Well, I'd like to also, today there was uh, David Can I Lees. answer the question? Oh, yeah, sorry, Nori. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, how you're not getting, not getting the, fan, the fan mail, Nori. <laughs> uh, I'm... I am worried, but I'd, I'd, I'll reiterate what I said before. Once I see the manifestos, once I see where they're going to stand, because there are areas where it would make a difference having a third, you know, SNP, Green, and a third in the... Yeah, absolutely. Party, there, there, but there's, there's definitely very a few of them. There's definitely a space, mate, but there's, there's, like you say, you need to see the individuals concerned, the baggage that they carry. And, and again, with this alliance one, they've said that people, anyone elected under the alliance, must support the SNP on independence, but they can then follow their conscience Do anything, what they want. anything yeah. else. Aye, which, and I'm sorry, mate, but how many years have we watched the left in Scotland? And if you give people the right to follow their conscience, it's going to be ferrets in a sack time. Only they'll yeah. be doing it live on the telly for the debating chamber. I can see, yeah. I can see why he's done that, but mm -hmm. I, I can't see how it'll work. Well, today was being discussed by James Mitchell, professor of politics at Edinburgh University, I think. Uh, David Leask. Um, oh God! Sorry. Kenny Farkasson had a piece in the Kenny Times. Fack, the same three. These three were having a go, well, not go, having a, a, a discussion about it on Twitter and nearly copied it all down and trying to produce it as one. Well, well th they're trying to cement the narrative, which I think Jimmy agrees with, that it's cheating. I don't agree with it, mate. What I've said mm -hmm. is that it will be presented as that by the unionists because basically... Sorry basically by going into the list vote and trying to game the system, which is pretty difficult, you are effectively trying to return an unproportional result from a proportionate system. Right, well, look, we've heard this a few times from you, Jimmy, mm. and you could be right, but can I ask, do you think uh, this intervention by uh, these the group of three people which, who are clearly non, they don't support independence, it's not, not, neither of the three of them have up to now, the word you're struggling for, Stuart, is unionists. Okay, unionists. <laughs> are they worried? Can you detect any sense of, are they worried about this? I no, think, I, think that, I think unionist supporters would try and promote this, mate, because the, 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 the small gains that may be made, you know, if list parties are to be successful, they need, they kind of need to be getting eight, nine, ten percent per, in each region 
to be getting seats. And I'd be very surprised if they can take that amount of votes. Well, the danger is that they, can, they have to actively campaign against the SNP. They can tell you as much as they want that they're going to support the SNP in the constituency part of the election. But to gain votes, they've got to say things that are anti-SNP. And that helps the unionist campaign because they can just say, and you know that their friends in the press will run it, wow, the, the, the independentistas are riven with splits from top to bottom. How can you possibly trust them to run this country? Mm, well, that used to work. I'm not sure it's going to work this year. Well, I tend, again, to go back to the question, I think two things are going on here. The unionist press are going to go with it's cheating. It's yeah, game that, the system. That's what Ke Kevin Fack did today. Yeah. Right. They're going to go with that narrative that it's not honest in some way. Mm. So at that point, every yes voter in the country should say, okay, we'll use the Westminster system, Aye. which would basically Aye. guarantee every seat at Holyrood goes to the SNP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, given with the way that the polls are at the moment, they would yeah. get a massive so, majority in all of See what their answer to that is, because if it's anything but the Westminster system is even worse than the Scottish system, gamed or not, you know they're lying through their teeth. So that's the first thing they're trying to do. The second thing they're hoping happens is what we're all scared of as independent supporters, that it does split the independence vote on the list. It might not, if the polls are right, it won't make a difference. The SNP will get their majority. Um, on the constituency. On the constituency. Yeah, but but if they're easy. wrong. Yeah, it's it easy for very dangerous. Say, it's easy for folk to say the SNP are going to win a landslide on the constituencies. How many times have we heard that the SNP are going to win a landslide before? We certainly heard it in 2016. We certainly heard it. Um, 2019, the general election. We've heard that 2017, the general election, that the SNP were winning a license, a landslide. And it's a difficult one because if they get 55% of the vote, which they're sitting at at the moment in the constituency, if they get that, then they do win a landslide. If that drops to 48, 47, they could actually lose the entire parliament. You could yeah. have Jackson Carlo as first minister, which would be disastrous. And one other thing to throw into the pot. If it is tight, there is nothing to stop the unionists all getting together and forming a Scottish government. They do it at council level. All right. There's nothing to stop that happening, in which case the whole Indy project is... Derailed under. for... I derailed for five years because if they make a deal, they well, would stick to it for five I years. I think it's going to be longer than five years, Jimmy, because I mm. think at that point they will pass legislation that makes it nigh on impossible. Aye. So there are real risks. The, the final thing I'd say about it, this latest indie party, the Umbrella Party, is just a, a vehicle for all the lunatics that didn't get in with rice. Right. Did we, we, right. we? I think we did cover the possibility there might even be half a dozen list potential list list only parties. Yeah. Uh, and right. What about what if under those circumstances? I would have imagined that the SNP would find it quite easy to defend against that. I think I think in that scenario, see, mm. there's I think there's I would say there's three or four separate um, and Lindy list parties as alongside the Greens. I think in a scenario like that, the Greens would probably get a nice wee bump because folk would take a look at all these other parties and go, nah, better the devil, you know. I think a lot of people that support the SNP are relatively happy to maybe lend their vote to a Green candidate because we all have issues with the Greens, obviously, but um, they've kind of provided this last five years in Holyrood, they have provided an indie support so that we've had an indie majority at Holyrood. Uh, it might have was, cost us a bit more than we wanted, but they've provided it. If there was a Labour for Indie Party, mm -hmm. they would have, no, no, more, no. They yeah. would have more chance of getting my vote than anything I can see now. 
there uh, there's something maybe you want, maybe there is somebody sitting there thinking and one of these people with money in scotland might be thinking oh, okay that sounds like a labor it, it, party kind of scenario somebody with money bank aye, but it, it's fine it's finding somebody it's finding the big beast to lead it like these wee indie parties mate the kind of that's why they ran polls talking about indie parties. If Alex Hammond was to come back and run them, because they've not got a big beast. Labour don't have a big beast that, you know, a party member, somebody that, with any experience whatsoever in Holyrood that actually has came out and supported. They're gonna, they're gonna have to look a lot more professional than they do at the moment. For, to what get about Henry on. McLeish? What about Henry McLeish? I would Henry's, consider it. Hen, Henry's had his day, mate. I would consider it if it was Henry McLeish. Uh, it would depend on what the rest of the party looked like. But politically, I would be much more happy about voting for a Labour Party manifesto if they supported independence. I do not like the look of the personnel that are in the Labour Party at Holyrood at the moment. Yeah. If they um, could get Henry McLeish and Malcolm Chisholm to front up a party with some solid young blood around them then they could make a difference mate they yeah. could make a, a inroads into the vote but i don't yeah. think they could convince these two guys one to stick their heart back in the ring they've both walked away for personal reasons and make them particularly well no both of them long-term politicals they know their mm. stuff but they chose to walk away for a reason their party abandoned them yeah yeah so i mean that that would be I think I would be 60, 70% sure to throw a vote to them. But at the moment, there's nobody. I mean, Kat Boyd, if she stands, which somebody was hinting at, um, wouldn't mm. get my vote. Who, who yeah. did you, what party is she supposed to stand for? I'm not, no she's, idea. She's left of left. The Labour Party are too right wing for her. She All was right, a wise never... candidate, I think. I remember you and I heard her speak. She's, she's yeah, a good yeah. talker, but that's another story. Her with the pink hair back, back in the day, wasn't it? She was always yeah. pink. Uh, interestingly, somebody like a Caroline Leckie from back in the SSP days. Yep. Um, yep. She's somebody another, that one. I could, another one that I could sit and listen to. And, and uh, I'm interested to see if some of these, you know, the ones that Tommy Sheridan calls scabs. Well, the ones Colin. That Tommy Sheridan. Aye, you'd be interested to hear what these you know? people have got to say. These are voices that perhaps should be getting heard and at the moment aren't. I, I would, I mean, the way we're framing it here, we're talking about individuals. So mm. if these guys stood as independents, independent candidates with no party behind them, they would look more attractive to me. Yeah, but the trouble is we're talking about list votes. It's only, you only get voted in if you're in a party. That's true. All right. That's true. So there's a limit on the democracy in Scotland. Bill, it's it's, interest, it's interesting that the likes of Colin Fox or that, I've, I don't think I've heard them say anything on any of these list parties as yet. I'm assuming that the SSP will be looking to put forward candidates. But if uh, they're not going to get involved, for example, with the Alliance for Independence, if Tommy Sheridan's involved with mm. And I'm, and I'm wondering, really I'm glad you mentioned to be that if, Sorry, sure. On you go, mate. So just, I'm glad you mentioned Caroline Leckie because she used to have a column in the National and she seemed to disappear. Although she about she may she qualified as a solicitor, I think, and she may yeah, be I think too she's busy working. working. I think she's yeah, definitely she's working in the law these days, mate. Aye. Um, right. What was the but, other lassie that? What was the other lassie? We Rosie Kane, that was it. Right. She was a bit of a firebrand as well. But um, I mean, there's plenty of people out there and. I mean, I, when I first heard this Umbrella idea for this other party, what, who are they again? The, is it Alliance for Alliance for Independence? And then it's going, the, the whole thing's going to be Alliance for Independence hashtag Max the Yes. That's right. what they're going to. Well, put, that's what they're looking to put on the ballot paper. That I, I have to say that that was my thought. That what they were looking to do was attract names that were recognisable from Scottish politics under their banner. Um, so effectively, it would be a group of independents. Yeah, but what's, what, what arises, certainly from me having a butcher's at, as at the moment, it looks like that's Tommy's 
uh, Mr. Sheridan's backing band, shall we say. The ones oh, right. who backed Tommy when he put the other people up in court and called them scabs and cross-examined them a couple of times and that. Well, if Tommy we... Sheridan's at the top of the list, I won't be voting for them. No, no, well, can we speculate on who else or what other group might also launch a party for the list? Uh, A-U-A-O-B? The, you know, the... All under one banner. Yeah, all the, or the organisers of all the marches in the last couple of years. Given that, given the infighting that they've been involved with constantly over the years, mate, I think them actually setting the chances of them setting up a party, they're more likely to open a bag of crisps, right, than a, set up a political party. Uh, no, they're very Can good at organising marches. Anybody else in mind? Well, there's always the hint of um, the Wings oh, Alex, Party. The oh, Wings Party. And he's getting more and more. He's getting more and more vociferous in his criticism. Ah, he's, been, he's been particularly strident in the last couple of weeks, hasn't he? That's the word, much better than mine. <laughs> he seems to have moved all his angst from independence onto the GRA. Yeah, but he's he's, he's having an, an off a pop at the present leadership of the SNP at the same time, which seems to be based around GRA mm, and. Aye. Not having a referendum when and, he wanted it. Not having a referendum when he wanted it. I, I, I see. There's an awful lot of that online, though, where um, people tell you, "I was promised a referendum in 2020," and you're like, "Well, kind of two things: COVID, and it ain't all about you." Well, <laughs> and unfortunately, the only way you get a referendum legally, sorry, I'm, I've just said that. I didn't mean to. I mm -hmm. apologise. <laughs> the, only, the only way you get a section 30 is if Boris says okay. Yeah. Um, uh, just coming back to the, I think it's the wings. You were just What you said about both of you, what you said about wings approach to the SNP hierarchy. Professor James Mitchell did, I took out one quote from the Twitter, wasn't a spat, him, Kevin Fack and uh, David Leask were talking, he did say, no surprise that the SNP leadership loyalists, and there's a lot of them, are so hostile. This is a challenge to the monopoly within a monopoly. SNP leadership within the SNP and SNP within the movement. It will surely create more headaches and help to the SNP leadership. Uh, the last sentence I'm not so sure about, but certainly it, it, it kind of illuminating what is a situation we appear we do appear to have. We have one party, and then we have one leadership group within that one party without much challenge. Yeah, but yeah, it's kind of Jimmy, smacks Jimmy, all these, kind of smacks it, Yeah, Jimmy, let's let's just agree with him because this is <laughs> this is him back to Aye. his his theory. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Yes, Murrell are secretly uh, running, running, running the whole of Scotland for a bloody Bond villain lair underneath Arthur's seat or something. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I think yeah. whatever, whatever that officer was, uh, I, I just oh, put up, I wish Alec, I, you know, God rest his soul. I wish Alec was still with us because he knew what was going on up there. Yeah, but Stuart, but I was listening to that quote and it, it reminds me an awful lot of these online experts as well when they tell you that Scotland's a one-party state, and then you say to them, "How can a how how can a minority government possibly be a one-party state?" And it takes them about three days to get back to you on that one. Well, I'm not saying it's I, a one-party state. I, no, no. After, after after yesterday's discussion, I was sitting thinking, and I was just wondering that, you know, there's an awful lot of folk as well say that nothing. That the, the, they're all sitting on their asses and they're all happy to take the wages, and they're doing absolutely nothing in that, but. When this um, power grab actually takes place, when it goes into operation, do we really think that during COVID, whilst Nicola Sturgeon and Jane Freeman have been dealing with this COVID thing, that the likes of Joanna Cherry and Keith Brown and that have all been sitting, you know, eating subsidised volivants and doing nay thinking about how we turn back the tide of whatever Boris has got to throw at us? I don't know what they're thinking is. I'm, like the rest of you, I'm just a commentator. But these people are getting paid 80, 90 grand a year. Surely they're going to have ideas to combat what's about to be thrown at us. Oh, Surely well, they're going to have a decent, a yeah, decent offering on independence to put no, no. into next year. That's like me at one point saying the other day that, you know, I, I used to think that 
the, the, the SNP had a secret plan. I didn't think they've thing. got secret plans, mate. Yeah, I just didn't think it's... Independence. No, I don't think they've got secret plans. I think they've got plans, but I don't think it's incumbent upon them to be telling people who are frustrated that what those plans are. I don't think until such time as they want to put their plans into operation, they, our frustration should mean next to nothing to them. Those are so the who, people who we have to trust because we'll put our trust in them so at the ballot box. Who do we know at the moment of the big names inside the SNP and still inside the SNP that might challenge the leadership. We've got Joanna Cherry. We've got Joanna Cherry has never, no. got Joanna Cherry. Cherry has never indicated that she, she intends to challenge for the leadership. She's always said she would not challenge Nicola Sturgeon. It's other people that are putting their name forward. People who want to create division within the SNP. Okay, so she don't count number. Kenny McCaskill, Chris Kenny McCaskill's Kenny McCaskill's career is effectively Stuart, over. Me. Stuart, can I, can I rephrase your question? Yes, absolutely. Who do we know in the SNP who is stupid enough and has a death wish that would like to challenge for the leadership of the SNP? I'm not, that wasn't my question. No, I rephrased it. Yeah, well, that's not the question. Why, I why would anybody challenge Nicola Sturgeon? Do you know where she is in the polls? Are you bored? Do you want to see a fight? <laughs> why on earth why on earth would Look, anybody on, no, in the yeah, SNP be yeah, stupid yeah, enough yeah, to yeah, challenge yeah, okay. Nicola Sturgeon you made your point yeah, but, I mean, we all like a Rami especially, especially us three well, I mean why, why would you do that come on Jeez. Cam unless you were I in the know. Labour Party obviously yeah, you can't do. well it's I'll it's like what, madness I'll tell you what, Nori, it'd be a brave Labour Party member that thought they were capable of going up in a campaign against Nicola Sturgeon. That would be a good laugh. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if got, anybody... We've got the most the successful party in aye, Scottish politics. Ever. And you're talking about changing shit. No, 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 I'm not. I'm just, we, we're, we're, spec we're just talking about, discussing all the possibilities and the ramifications and, and trying to invent, identify what's happening, what might happen, and the effect on the independence movement. Am I summing up okay? Oh, well, not bad, not bad. Well, I'll tell you what definitely won't happen. Nobody will challenge Nicholas Sturgeon for the leadership of the SNP. I doubt it very much. It, I, I, you're right. But uh, we're, what they're trying to do, some of them, is influence policy from within the SNP and some from without the SNP because they don't, uh, not everyone in the independence movement agrees with their current policy. That's all that's happening. Well, Aye, it's but It's Stuart, politics, Stuart. People you've, do that in politics. You've got an election next year. <sighs> if you want to change direction, you can, that's, a, that's a place where you change direction, at the ballot box. But well, this, thing, sure. this thing where people are People are bored. They need a bloody campaign. They need something to go and do. Oh, aye, aye, because, aye, that's true. Because the, the, the thing about trust that you mentioned earlier, the whole of Scotland's putting their trust in Nicola Sturgeon around COVID. Why wouldn't you put your trust in Nicola Sturgeon around independence? Well, very because very long good. before COVID yeah, came point. on the scene, she said she would work to make Scotland independent. Well, but I'd still like to raise another question. We're, maybe we're just old-time Labour supporters over the years and it used to always be the annual conference when things got changed, whereas SNP conferences, they're all just a, a parade really these days. And nowadays we're not even having them. I'm, sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm an old time Labour supporter and conference was not where anything got changed. Aye, it got changed once or twice in history. And by the way, see, see when you, the Labour conference was stuck on the telly every year. And you used to get to watch the infighting that went on amongst the Labour Party. Perhaps that's the reason Maggie Thatcher won three elections, then John Major won one behind her. Do you remember enjoying watching the Labour Party conferences when Militant were around? Go. Oh. Yeah, look what I happened. used to them. I used, oh, I used to like going to, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I used to go to the Miners Gala to hear Mick McGahey speak, but I wouldn't have voted for him. Oh, he was a wonderful, a wonderful speaker, but my God, you wouldn't have given him a position as a politician, would you? Was that Sheila Myers? Oh, no, I know. I know. He was do you, do you know, do you know 
do you know that the Labour Party conference has never discussed or voted on Scottish independence? I never Ever. That. Ever. Yeah. It's never been on the floor of conference. <clears throat> that maybe says a hell of a lot more about the Labour Party than anything that any of the three of us have ever come out with. Okay, so but uh, how do you, let's say you are a, 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 a supporter of the First Minister, a supporter of independence, and you're inside the SNP, but you don't agree with all the policies they're currently following. How do you effect changes? You go along to a branch meeting and then what? Well, that's you go along to the branch meeting, you persuade them to put, um, what do they call a it, motion. Jimmy? A, a motion. motion to conference. That goes in front of a committee and they decide whether the motion goes forward or not. Yeah, but what if you're not having a conference, which might happen this might not happen this year, depending on how you put it. Um, you go to your local branch, you persuade them. And you make a, you make a fuss at the local branch. No, and then, no and the, the, only, the only way to change policy is to get a motion passed at conference. Well, if you're an ordinary member. Well, that, that, all I'm trying to... Uh, pull out of you, elicit is an explanation for why we have these, uh, this sudden rash of uh, list parties, you know, to some extent. Because <laughs> it's an election year, Stuart. These clowns want a job. <laughs> well, there's another aspect of it. There are, there are people out there who covet the salary and the expenses of an MSP massively and they desperately want said position yeah but jimmy let's be honest generally speaking these are people that are either inside the su a successful party like the snp or they're um no no, no 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 steve arnott only missed out steve arnott that's involved with alliance for independence he only missed out by a few hundred votes Who's back he? in the day sorry i've never he's heard an ex-msp no no that's uh, he was he missed out on the as an msp mate he was all right Oh, he yeah, was, I, uh, um, um, I believe he was SSP and he didn't, he didn't miss out. I think it was a few hundred votes, mate. He's wanted to get back ever since. It's one of Tommy's chums. Ah, uh, okay. But, and he's, I mean, he's a regional was, organizer for the Alliance for Independence as well. Somebody, ah. was, somebody was always going to eventually go, wait a minute. How are there so many unionists in Holyrood? Oh, it's because they've got three parties and they continually win on the list. Can we throw a pigeon in amongst that with another independent supporting list party? And I, I mean, I'm actually surprised it took so long. That's a fair point. I think it took so long because the SNP were quite so successful, mate. I mean, you can, you can look at the 2016 election and say they weren't that successful, but they were successful enough at making sure that all the other wee diddy parties round about them didn't get seats. Well, you know I, I mean... I mean I will consider it a useful exercise if it forces the SNP to make independent, an independence referendum the major front page of yeah. their manifesto. So that's what, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a decent offering in the manifesto on independence. Leverage. And, that's high. and I'm also looking for indication towards what, October, September, October, November, depending on when they have their conference. But at that point, I want indications that independence is going to be a big part of their manifesto. And also, fighting, to, I think they need to revamp their Westminster tactics and fight dirty down there. As I say, every line of every bill, object. Every, I think... every time there's a vote, disappear and say, that, that, is, is the House core it today? Is that, how can we have a vote? No, there are too many people in the bar at the moment. Find ways to disrupt Westminster. Because that, that'll work, because the Speaker will either ignore them, and it'll work because of that, or they'll get their count every head in the place every single minute of the day. Mm -hmm. Having well, said that, okay. will the whole of Parliament be seated by that point? Possibly not, mate. I think it might well be... <laughs> Well, here's another At that question. point, we're relying on Boris to start bloody getting things right around COVID. Oh, well. You never get a full seat parliament. Looking, at, looking around the world, uh, I wouldn't have any confidence that we would have a second peak in England in the near mm -hmm. future. You went a bit wobbly agree. there, Stuart. You wouldn't have any confidence there won't be a second peak in England, of course. Yes. 
uh, yeah, coronavirus. I, I yeah. think you're probably quite right, Stuart. I think the, the numbers down there are still not nice. And they ain't, they've kind of plateaued as pretty crap, a very crap compared to the rest of the United Four Nations in the United Kingdom. So if things go badly, aye, we could be looking at, at the, we could be looking at them trying in some way put off next year's Hollywood election, although I think I think that's a bit of a stretch. Jimmy, long before that I'm long before that I'm thinking about bear in mind how quickly back in um, March and April, how quickly it went from half a dozen cases in three weeks it went from that into hundreds, thousands. I mean it, it, it gallops once it gets going again. Yeah, but it, I mean we're much more aware of the risk now. I I have to say I expect to see a, a wave in the winter. I don't oh, well, think yeah, it'll be a tidal bit. wave. No, I don't think I, it'll be a tidal wave. I, I doubt I doubt we'll get a major spike. I think we'll we, get lots of little spikes. A resurgence as the first minister called it twice this week. I'm um, talking about I, England here. No, not well, Scotland. Look, well, I was going to say, do you want a wee wager on that? I think there will be a, uh, another lockdown in England, which could happen in Scotland too. And by the way, there's, uh, Ireland's a bit of a back door. You know, there's a, it's a free movement area between Ireland and, and the United Kingdom. And Ireland at the moment has, does not have strict quarantine from the United States. And Stuart, free movement area but you you try going on holiday to ireland and no call in, quarantine and some there ain't no free movement between ireland and britain at the moment and the the quarantine regulations in ireland all they are at the moment you just fill in a form before when you arrive in ireland not even before you go on the plane from america you fill in a form when you arrive and there's a fine if you don't fill in the form and that's the end of it right so you're talking about it traveling from ireland Yes, they're worried in Ireland. They're getting very to worried. To England, about it. coming from Eng no, coming from America, they're very worried about it coming in from America. And there's, there's an open border, obviously, in Ireland to the GB. Right. Again, so, why sorry, we, I why thought we, we were talking about on England. Epidemiology guys, we're three guys for the commentariat that talk about politics. Because why are we, we speculating. Because we're this? better qualified to talk about it than Boris Johnson. Me, I've. Been to the toilet and left things in there that are better qualified to talk about than Boris Johnson. <laughs> I mean, well, he's, he's, this man comes up, you ought to have a job writing for the private eye. They'd pay you money for that every week. They would he's, pay me money for some of the stuff I would come to my mate, trust me. He's got too much a potty mouth for private eye. No, I mean, right. not. They no, need to send him to Fetis for a couple of years before he gets no, away no, for no. private I mean, eye. I mean, he's full of wee gems oh, yeah. like that. Sorry, I've been to Fetis a few times in the taxi, mate. Trust me. <laughs> I can feel the cold finger of the God, whoever, whoever is God, watching my back the minute I go in the doors of Fetis College. I wouldn't last five minutes in there if I wasn't driving a cab. Oh, I don't know. There's some scum gets to go to Fetis now. I know this <laughs> scum. <laughs> I wouldn't call Jim. How dare you call Jimmy scum? Uh, hey, excuse me. Anybody whose dad isn't on 150 to 200,000 a year scum. Aye, aye. Oh, okay. That's it's the way it works. A particularly entertaining building, that, if nothing else. Right, lads. Anything to finish with? No. no we, well, the sun's out again. We kicked, kicked the air suit out, have we? I think we kind of have me, aye. Okay. Uh, well, thanks to me, Hutton, the late Stuart Lockhead, um, in the sense that you weren't here at the oh, beginning. Oh, no, no, you started without me. Yeah, you for about five minutes without you. Yeah, but you were late. Fifteen minutes after the message went out. Okay, I was late. I'll take the <laughs> You point. were late. Yeah. I, had to go for, I had to go and, and, and interrogate my little uh, private porcelain. Right, we didn't need to know that. Uh, we, could have, we could have finished the programme without hearing that one. We didn't need to know that. I'm uh, not taking this accusation that I was late. You were very late. <laughs> can we just finish? Uh, I'm not Stuart. Thanks for listening. And my Bye -bye. for Stuart and his discussion of his toilet arrangements. Cheers for now. <laughs>